We're going to show you the best technique to set up your communication radios prior to an instrument flights. Here we are on the ramp in Teterboro. I've got my airport diagram on my EFB here. We're going to use that to find where all the frequencies are that we need to set this up. First off, I've got my ATIS in COM2, and uh, we're monitoring COM2 here. So we'll pick up the weather. Uh, they're using runway 24, and we've got information alpha, say. From there, we'll call clearance. I've already got that set up in COM1. And I'll select that on my audio panel and turn the uh, monitoring on COM2 off so I'm not distracted by that ATIS frequency. We're using COM1 to pick up our clearance because COM1 typically has a better line of sight reception. The antenna for COM1 is on the top of almost every airplane. Of course, your configuration may differ, so we have our clearance here. The only thing we really need from this for this exercise is the departure frequency of 126.7. We'll be for referring to that later. After we get our clearance, we're gonna set up all the avionics. To see our flow for how we set up the avionics in an efficient way, please check out the link above for our setup video. And as we were saying, COM1 is going to give us our best line of sight reception because of that antenna location. So we're going to use COM1 for all our movement frequencies. That's going to mean ground, tower, and all our airborne communication frequencies with ATC. We'll use COM2 to monitor. That said, we'll change the configuration here of the radios. Uh, on COM2, I'm going to flip guard 121.5 to active and select uh, the COM2 uh, monitor on the audio panel so we can hear that. Whoops, excuse me. And on COM1, we're going to flip ground to active, and I'll tune in the tower, which is 119.5. And at this point, we're ready to call ground to taxi off the ramp. When you're ready to switch to the tower uh, with the aircraft stopped, of course, we'll go ahead and put the tower in the active frequency on number one, and then the standby frequency on number one, we're gonna put our departure frequency of 26.7 in this case. That way we're ready after takeoff when tower switches to departure control, all we have to do is push that one button and we're using COM1, best line of sight for all our movement frequency. Here's some common errors we see in radio setup technique. The most common one is not having the next frequency in the progression of the flight ready in the standby frequency. So one example would be forgetting to set the departure frequency after you switch to tower. So you take off and then flip back to ground when tower tells you to call departure. Another common, we'll call it an error, is having departure queued up on radio two, which ends up being a lot of button pushing after departure. So you have to flip the frequency to active in number two and then manipulate the audio panel to switch which radio you're talking on. So we find these techniques are quite efficient from our experience in general aviation and airline flying, but you may need to adapt slightly to a suit a specific situation. Leave us a comment below with the techniques you use to keep the cockpit organized in flight.